Hello there Pixel Pushers out there, this is Sadiq Hussain from the Pixel Pushers YouTube um, channel and um, you've already probably seen, uh, if you haven't then I'll leave a link in the description and there'll be a link at the end but you've already, if you haven't already seen the previous video that I did which was looking at in the initial registration and installation of the um, Adobe Bridge software on the desktop. Now here we're doing exactly the same thing but this is on the new M1 Apple Silicon MacBook Air which is my laptop of choice and um, I'm just going through the process. It's virtually the same so we're at the um, section where we're uh, in our Adobe account so I've already got an Adobe account same as before and, and I'm just going through the Adobe software library and it's not uh, I always find that the Adobe Bridge isn't that easy to find it's not categorized obviously so you have to just do a search on their um, on their uh, creative cloud platform which is where you can get all their software from and uh, and I just did that as you saw and I've already downloaded Bridge installer once before this so this is a second copy of it um, just to sort of go through the um, uh, ironing out any of the kinks but there's nothing it's very straightforward so you just double click that so as I said I'm on a Mac laptop which is the latest Apple Silicon based laptops and the only difference between this and the Intel based uh, uh, Mac laptops and Mac computers is the fact that if you have an app um, uh, that isn't optimized for the Apple Silicon, uh, which this in fact isn't, Bridge isn't yet, which is quite amazing that Adobe, such a large organization, um, hasn't done that yet. And Apple Silicon's now been out, certainly been around here. And here's the um, notification. Uh, you know, it wants you to install the Intel based version of Bridge because they haven't quite got there and developed. Uh, an Apple Silicon version, which they should have done. A large company like Adobe, they really ought to have got their act together a lot earlier. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, that's not a problem. If you've got Apple Silicon uh, computers or laptops, um, this uh, Bridge Intel version of Bridge will work fine. Why? Because Apple anticipated this and uh, they knew that not all software this is just all about the authentication uh, process uh, you can see all the information so apple are very um, uh, uh, draconian if you like with regards to protecting what gets installed on the computers that doesn't come from the app store uh, apple's uh, own app store or recognized uh, vendors and even though Adobe is a large organization, it's still a third party vendor. So Apple goes through quite rightly, I think, a lot of uh, authentication steps, as you can see here. So while that's doing in the background, I'll just mention again with regards to the Apple Silicon version of um, of any software, in this case, uh, Adobe's bridge uh, image cataloging and um, sorting and um, uh, management software. Uh, and that is they've got a, uh, their own bit of software called Rosetta 2. Um, it's the second version of Rosetta. And, and if you know your history, then you'll know that uh, Rosetta was kind of the missing link in, I believe, deciphering the um, hieroglyphics, uh, the Egyptian hieroglyphics on all the different monuments and the pyramids and the buildings in, uh, in, in, in Egypt. And this rosetta stone was uh, like the key um, the primer if you like that allowed you to um, to decipher some key uh, visuals and then work out the alphabet from that or the uh, their equivalent of the alphabet so essentially the rosetta software or the rosetta 2 software that apple provides pre-installed um, oh no, sorry, you do download it from the App Store when you first buy a, uh, an M1 Apple Silicon uh, Apple uh, Apple machine is that once you've, it's installed, which it is on this laptop, then, uh, then that kicks in and that basically translates the Intel version of any software so that the Apple Silicon can understand it and and process the instructions from it. That's essentially, and it's all seamless, it's all done in the background. And so far, I mean, I've had this um, 
uh, Apple Silicon laptop now for uh, some time, many months. And the few apps that I've installed on it that are Intel based versions only uh, and not the Apple Silicon version, the um, uh, Rosetta kicks in and it makes it work flawlessly. Probably a bit slower uh, because it's, it's an extra step that it needs to take. Uh, to process all the instructions but in everyday use it hasn't slowed things down now when I actually get round to um, demonstrating to you all the intricacies and the workflows and the workings of Adobe Bridge both on the desktop and on the Apple Silicon laptop then if we see some differences then obviously I'll point those out but honestly I don't think there will be any noticeable uh, differences in speed or processing it will be fine, um, certainly for every, most everyday purposes. So as you can see here, while I'm talking to you, just talking about that difference, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to make an Apple Silicon version of bridge installation and an Intel-based Apple desktop version of bridge installation. So my desktop is Intel-based, it's an older one, and the MacBook Air is the Apple Silicon version. So as you can see in the background, it's installing both Creative Cloud and Bridge. Now, Bridge is free. Creative Cloud is the platform that Adobe, because I don't have any other Adobe software on my computers anymore. Uh, I tell a lie. Other than something like uh, free software, like um, uh, Adobe Acrobat Reader for PDF file management. Uh, but generally speaking, any paid software from Adobe, because I've given up on Photoshop um, a, a, a good two or three years ago, and I've wholeheartedly gone across to the Affinity suite of software. Uh, but Affinity don't do a um, uh, image management uh, um, uh, cataloging software yet, uh, and I don't believe they've got anything on the cards for the foreseeable future, is what I'd heard from, uh, from uh, Affinity staff. But so I want to explore an alternative. And of course, Adobe's Bridge comes highly recommended and um, and I've used it briefly in the past and a lot of um, uh, users recommend it. So that's what we're doing here to see how good it is and how useful is it and how seamlessly does it work with Affinity Photo uh, as this is an Affinity Photo centered channel. And... Um, uh, you can see there bridge is uh, installing now 32 percent done and i'm just showing you here these are all the other uh, software from from this platform which you can of course download um, many of them you can try in advance get a trial version and then you can buy them so that's good uh, i mean the xd is a really good design and prototyping um, software particularly for websites and um, doing mood boards and that kind of thing if you're a designer um, a um, uh, electronic platform designer uh, which i'm not and um, and there's animate and uh, audition which is uh, audio editing and so on so clearly if you're into the adobe uh, ecosystem then there's a there's a lot of software that are that is very good but of course it all comes at a price uh, their premium software comes at a price but I always think the premium software doesn't always mean good premium sometimes means bloated sometimes mean having 80% of functions that you're never going to use um, so hence why I'm also attracted to something like uh, um, Affinity Photo so that's uh, Bridgings downloaded and um, ready to go installed uh, so if you go just go to the top there just verifying Adobe Bridge and then the open button is there on the right and it's up to date and, uh, uh, and on this laptop I didn't have a previous version of Bridge uh, again if you recall from the previous video on the desktop um, Intel desktop version of Bridge when we did that video tutorial I'd already got an older version of Bridge and at this point it then asked me to do you want to update uh, each version and then when I wanted to install the latest version he quite intelligently said do you want to you know get rid of your old version which was really convenient and that worked really well uh, it hasn't caused any problems so here on the um, laptop um, apple silicon version we're now just about to open up uh, adobe bridge and we'll just here we go just do a quick uh, tour this won't be any different to 
uh, what you saw on the desktop so if you think that you've seen all of that now or the differences and you want to skip to the end by all means do that but we're only talking a few more minutes so if you can stop till the end that would be great uh, and this is just the what's new in the current version and of course you can have a look through that and um uh, and so the, the, the system is, the setup is exactly the same. You've got your folders on the top left hand side and the existing filing structure of your computer. Um, you've got your um, uh, workspaces um, uh, near the t at the top and there's uh, five or six different workspaces. Most people would use essentials. That's what I intend to do from uh, my knowledge of it. Um, but there are other versions like film strip and uh, um, different uh, um, layouts that you might like or you can do your own uh, custom one uh, as well uh, and um, so I'm just sort of showing you here uh, how you navigate through your uh, filing structure with a preview you can change the um, the panes in this window um, so you can may perhaps have the preview much bigger or, or a bit smaller depending on what you want to emphasize uh, at that point in time with your workflow. So we've got little thumbnails and here you can see I'm changing the um, the panes so we can make the, the preview pane uh, bigger. And these are all, these particular images are all Canon RAW files, Canon CR2 files, Canon RAW 2 version 2. Um, and uh, and this is the bit again I'll emphasize as I did on the other video is that not being able to move a particular tab uh, into a different position I just think it's a, a little bit of an oversight uh, you know I might not want favorites left I want, might want folders to the left and and favorites to the right uh, as of now I haven't found a way of flipping those over if I wanted to maybe there is but it's certainly not just drag and drop uh, which is what you get in affinity photo when you want to do the same thing so I don't see any reason why it shouldn't be in here but nevertheless it isn't okay so as I said this uh, the interface here for Adobe Bridge whether it's on this um, uh, on the laptop version um, uh, the uh, Intel uh, version on the laptop they're running under Rosetta or, or the desktop version because essentially they're both the same software the Intel version of the software uh, and all I wanted to demonstrate here was how smoothly does it run even though it's an Intel based software running on an Apple Silicon um, architecture but with an interim uh, Rosetta software translating everything on the fly and as you can see certainly so far uh, during the installation and the um, overview process absolutely no problem the real test will be of course when we are doing uh, uh, you know serious um, uh, cataloging and uh, organizing and uh, looking at metadata and um, uh, starring images giving key data uh, against each images or doing bulk uh, renaming and so on and so forth and this is the Adobe Bridge photo downloader we'll obviously be using that um, when we go through into more detail but this particular video is just about the initial registration setup and installation and an initial overview which we're now just coming to the end of I don't have um, Adobe uh, Camera Raw editor uh, on it again because that's not something I use I use um, uh, Affinity Photos uh, Raw developer uh, built in and that suits me fine so again here's Apple asking for lots of permissions which is of course is only right and proper but it does kind of get on your on your nerves a bit because there's every now and again you've got to click on yes or no of course if you say no then then you can't do anything uh, so it has to be a yes if you want to continue but nevertheless they're just making sure so that you you understand that it is a third party software that you're installing and about to use and um, so we're just going through all of that uh, and of course if you, I can just quit it here now uh, so look out for the full video when we are doing the in-depth review of um, Adobe Bridge on the um, Apple Silicon version of the software. Thank you for watching, I'll see you next time.